In March of 2003, a US-led coalition launched a combined air and seaborne invasion of Iraq. In the weeks and months following the invasion, the central city of Al Fallujah became one of the focal points from which the insurgency against the coalition was waged, with tensions in the city eventually reaching a boiling point exactly a year later, when four American contractors were murdered in March of 2004. This led to US forces launching Operation Vigilant Resolve in April of that year, with the objective being to rid Fallujah of insurgents and find those responsible for the murders. Eventually, political pressure from the Iraqi government led to the abandonment of the operation and the withdrawal of all US troops from Fallujah, with security of the city transferred to a locally raised militia. This militia, however, disbanded in September and handed all of their American equipment over to the insurgents, who throughout the autumn began to turn the city into a stronghold, with tunnel lines, fortified buildings, trenches and IEDs. Consequently, coalition forces decided to mount another effort to seize Fallujah, which culminated in the launching of Operation Phantom Fury on the 7th of November 2004. Among the troops involved in the offensive were the US Marines of 1st Platoon, Alpha Company, the 1st Battalion, the 3rd Marine Regiment, who had arrived in the Iraq from the Pacific in October. Initially, 1st Platoon found itself in battalion reserve for the first stages of Operation Phantom Fury, and it would not be until the night of the 11th, 12th of November 2004 that it moved forward to the front line and was ordered to begin clearing blocks of houses of insurgents. By the end of the 14th of November, the platoon had made steady progress, with the mission resuming at 0700 on the 15th as it pressed on to another block of buildings, with its second squad clearing six houses by 0830. Advancing further down the street, second squad got into position outside of house number seven, with four marines forming team one, or the assault team, whilst the further four became team two. Among the marines in team two was Sergeant Rafael Peralta, a former Mexican immigrant who had moved to America at a young age and enlisted into the US Marines in the year of 2000. It was while serving with the US Marine Corps that he became an American citizen. With the whole second squad in position, the assault team made a forced entry into Building 7 at approximately 0900, with the first two Marines clearing the living room before one of them branched off and secured the room to the left. Directly behind them, the two other Marines of Team 1, in addition to the four of Team 2, followed up and prepared to advance into the room to their front, when a couple of insurgents began sporadically firing through the doorway. Immediately, the US Marines returned fire, just as Sergeant Rafael Peralta, who was standing on the left side of the living room, was knocked onto his stomach having been hit in the head by a ricocheting bullet. On seeing his colleague go down, one of the Marines rushed over to the sergeant and, as he later recalled, I ran over to him from where I took cover. I asked him if he was okay, but he just mumbled to me and I could not understand him. At the time, I could not tell if he was wounded or not. Then I heard a grenade come through the doorway. The grenade had been thrown from one of the insurgents and landed to the right of Sergeant Peralta, who, with complete disregard for his own safety, reached out and pulled the grenade under his body. At the same time, the rest of the second squad called out grenade and sought cover with three marines managing to exit the building whilst the other four hit the deck. Seconds later, the grenade detonated underneath Sergeant Peralta. Following the blast, the four marines still inside the building, excluding the sergeant, gathered their bearings and made their way to the front door, where they linked back up with the three who had exited moments earlier. From here, the seven marines made their way across the street to assess the situation and patch up their wounds with one having sustained a bullet into one of his forearms, and three had taken shrapnel as a result of the grenade. Meanwhile, elements of 1st squad moved forward and reinforced 2nd squad, who made the decision to re-enter the building, recover Sergeant Peralta, and neutralise the enemy. Advancing cautiously back into Building 7, some of the Marines fired through the walls and into the rooms where the insurgents were last seen, and within several minutes, the house was secured with a total of three AK-47s, two grenades, two mortars, three RPGs, in addition to a large quantity of ammunition, being seized from the premises. It later transpired that two insurgents had fled from the building shortly after the grenade was thrown and were cut down by another detachment of US Marines, who were clearing the house at the rear. With Building 7 in American hands, an assault amphibious vehicle was called forward to evacuate the wounded with Sergeant Rafael Peralta being safely moved out onto the street and onto the back of the AAV, 
where sadly he was pronounced as killed in action at 0915 on the 15th of November 2004. The courage displayed by Sergeant Rafael Peralta to pull the enemy grenade under his body not only led to him absorbing the brunt of the blast, but also saved the lives of his fellow Marines around him. One US Marine who was in the building at the time stated during a post-battle investigation that Sergeant Peralta, who had been hit by small arms fire, hugged the grenade and saved the lives of the Marines in the room with him. Those Marines' lives were saved by his actions. This statement was echoed by the other Marines in 2nd Squad, and over the next few weeks, many senior military officials approved a recommendation for the sergeant to be posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor, the US military's highest decoration. However, despite the weight of the evidence available, including witness statements from the seven Marines present at the time and damage visible in Sergeant Peralta's flak vest and M16, the US Department of Defense was not convinced that the sergeant had deliberately pulled the grenade under his body, and as such, they downgraded his recommendation to a Navy Cross, the second highest military award in the US Navy. It is interesting to point out that the citation for this award clearly indicates that Sergeant Peralta deliberately moved the grenade to underneath him. The citation reads, Without hesitation and with complete disregard for his own personal safety, Sergeant Peralta reached out and pulled the grenade to his body, absorbing the brunt of the blast and shielding fellow Marines only feet away. As one article explains, The DOD saw fit not to award him the Medal of Honor because it determined he could not have deliberately pulled the grenade under his body. However, he was awarded the country's second highest commendation for bravery for doing precisely that.